Perhaps for this one, Hello. we should read all the cards, okay. per se. Eh. We should just... Anyway. Alright, guys. Uh, let's let's just the stream started, speed. guys. Alright. Um, hello, welcome. I'm Ruben Cunnington. I'm here with Calabar, Kajlar, and uh, Simon? Or... Uh, no. Yep. And we are... Yep, and we are doing... <laughs> we are doing a set review of Hollows of Lordaeron, uh, which is a Dark Souls inspired set. And this is a custom magic set that is currently in the running to be entered into the custom magic discord's custom standard format. Um, we're going to be looking at the mythics and rares, just going through them, looking at them from a constructed perspective. And the first card we're going to look at... Yeah, we'll get... if we have time. Um, uh, first card we're looking at is Havel the Rock. It's three white white legendary creature, human knight, when it's the battlefield, put an equipment card from your hand onto the battlefield attached to him. It has Hollow, this is one of the new mechanics in the set, which is five white white, exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of the card except it's a black zombie human knight that enters the battlefield tapped. So the difference between this Holocaust and the bar? Varies. Yeah, so... Yes, yes, yes. So, um, uh, what I like about Havel is there might be some fun equipment to flash him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think I that's like worth mentioning. Sure. I think it's worth mentioning oh, yeah. what the difference between Hollow and, and Balm is. So, Hollow, the creature will enter tapped, but you can flash it in. It has basically instant speed. Um, it's not sorcery only like Embalm is. Um, and it's a black zombie, not a white zombie. Alright. Continue, guys. Um, I think Havel is too expensive for any deck that would want a, 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 a beater that gets a free equipment. Mm. Yeah. I think that's true. I think if there was better equipment, like an Argentum armor, it would be a lot better. However, mm -hmm. most of the equipment, and most of the equipment even coming in with Hollows, as we'll see later, are fairly cheap and low to the ground. So I am not a fan of Havel in any deck. The yes. biggest one is just plus one, plus four. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so you don't you don't think you know make me watch other cards coming in. Don't mean if somebody does like an Argentum armor or even a world slayer something to keep note of. So you don't think a yeah, eight eight an eight eight trample for five is enough? No. Well yeah, yeah. Not when it's a two card combo. Yeah. I don't know. Well yeah, I I suspect it does not have the right shell at the moment. Anyway. Let's continue. Uh, Seif's Betrayal. It's six blue, blue, blue mythics uh, sorcery. Shuffle your hands and graveyards into your library, then draw seven cards. Take an extra turn after this. Exile Seif's Betrayal. Ooh, this is spicy. So, <laughs> extra turn card that also refreshes you. Also, it's a power two knights. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's time walk twister. Time walk twister. And, and oh no no, but it's better than time twister because it's one. It's better than Time Twister because it's one-sided, which is absurd. Uh, That's true. Um, but it's yes, it, it, is, it is nine mana. If there is some way of cheating in instant sorceries, maybe. Uh, I don't think there's. we have any... Mm, well, we'll have to take a look. Um, Nito, the Grave Lord, free black, 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 legendary creature, skeleton god at Mythic. It, at the beginning of your... End step, create a 1 1 black skeleton creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. Tap, sacrifice, X other skeletons, non skeleton creatures get minus X minus X until on the turn. He's a 4 6. So, this card, like, definitely has a power level yeah. there. Yeah, right? I think you can be a good, uh, like, mid range mm -hmm. finisher. Or, yeah. Yeah, well, this card just goes so far over the top, like, of a lot of, like, you know, and 4 and 5 drop. Yeah. He's stronger than what the uh, the the four green green, well, green card that creates mm. a, a dude every upkeep. Yeah. This is on your end step, notably. So right. When you play this, this is likely nine, ten powers of creatures. Yeah, like it, yeah. If you're getting if you if you're getting more than three skeletons from this. In the format right now, like triple black and doesn't have hex group like Krakow. In the format as he is, n as it is, no. But in the format as it will be under Hollows, perhaps. Like, 
Dreams great Dreamscape is no great shakes for black and hollows is. Hmm. So black's losing some of their removal, but like not yes. much else. Yeah. Yes. I mean he's reason unto itself to make decks that you know. Yes. So yes. I, I will be casting some in the future. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, definitely a card to look out for. Um Okay, let's move on to another mythic. This is Ceaseless Discharge. Four red, 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 red. So it's eight mana in total. Uh, legendary creature, demon, and mythic. At the beginning of, of each of your main phases, choose one. A add red, 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 eight red mana to your mana pool. Or Ceaseless Discharge <laughs> deals eight damage to target creature. And it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Man, if I could just add eight red mana to my mana pool... I could cast this guy. <laughs> you can, well, you can cast, you could cast, it wouldn't go very well because he's legendary, but like, you yeah. could technically do it. <laughs> so, it's each of your main phases, so if you ever untap with this creature, you're like, I have every mana, but like, yeah, I don't think this is playable. It's a... Like, it could I don't, be a reanimation target, but it's on my Yeah, um... Yeah, we're kinda... I don't think... We have only one reanimator, or one good, decent reanimator card, and, like, that right. sees no play. Um, yeah, we just don't have any good enough reanimator cards at the moment to... Uh, I believe Hollow brings one or two at rare, but we'll hmm. find out. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for it. Um, Strange Encounter, this is a card I like. Uh, this is X and Green, for, uh, Sorcery and Mythic. Journey X times, which means exile the top X cards of your library face up. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a journeyed card you own into your hand. And then put a creature with converted mana cost X or less from among journey cards you own onto the battlefield under your control. Now this, this is a ramp target. <laughs> It does not say green creature. Right? Yes. It's it's... I'm not even sure if it's a ramp target. One of the interesting things about this this card in particular is that you can do a lot of pre-work to set this card up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... It's not necessarily hmm. cards revealed this way. This is among your journey cards. Yep. So if you are in some sort of journey tempo deck, you can play around with, you know, setting this up to get mm. to your targets. And, well, and often... Tripping yeah, and like yeah, you can also do I... stuff like if you're ahead already, you can just be like, oh, turn three, x equals two, and just like, uh, you know, get it, you get in two journey cards and then hit them with two creatures to draw two. Like it can, it right. can range from like a divination to an end game spell, and that's super flexible. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this card's going to be a lot of fun. Where you, where you journey and see, hey, I've got a bear. I'm going to cast it for three and get a free bear. Yeah. Yeah, well, isn't if you cast this for... Yeah, if you cast this for free mana, get a free bear, and draw, like, like two cards. The worst divination. But no, no, it's, it's a divination that draws you two cards, right? Like... Right. Uh, sorry, it's a 2-2 it's a two -two that draws you two cards. That, that, that's, that's one of the weird things. So it's not exactly it, draw, like... like yeah. you yes, play, you actually have to hit them. To do nothing. This is right. yes. more of a mid range or tempo card, right. where you have to just plan to always at least try to hit face at mm. some I'm definitely going to try to make some sort of like green fopta deck green blue or something like <laughs> you know uh yeah or uh it's too bad that a lot of the uh blue green tempo cards are kind of rotating out with dreamscape because I would have loved to have like you know been oh, like okay. spell slumber more eyes and that kind of thing it would have been sweet but uh oh, sorcery. yeah um, I think this card will pa find a lot of uh, brews. I don't, I don't know if it's guaranteed at home, but a lot of people. Will... Yes, a lot of people will try this, and mm -hmm. I, it definitely it has the potential to get there, but not. It's not like a. This card isn't necessarily strong enough to just slam into every deck. I'm excited for my opponent to do X equals three and lose to a Briar Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, let's move on. move on. Yeah. Another X spell. This is uh, Deluge Hydra. X, green, blue. Deluge Hydra enters the battlefield with X what, plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever it attacks, choose a number of target permanents equal to or less than Deluge 
Hydra's power. For each of those permanents, tap or untap that permanent. No, it's a zero zero. Uh, I've never really liked these Hydra. Uh, I've never really liked the Hydra's. Yeah. So there's a blue green ramp shell, and one of the issues I found when trying to build it is there aren't a lot of payoff targets. Hmm. The shell is that. Mm -hmm. But is it like, like is it even if, or if I'm putting yep, it's when super it flexible down to uh, creatures? Like it's but but isn't it? It only tap. It only taps them when it's attacking. Like it's mm -hmm. as in it doesn't help you. It doesn't stabilize you, right? Like is basically the main thing. Yeah. It doesn't like well, it, does, it. It is. Um, you want your ramp targets to like stabilize the game against the mid range decks. And go over the top. Well, this doesn't. This is too. It's like both too small and it only works on attacking. I don't know. Uh, I'm not convinced by this. Yeah. Um, you guys can try it in your blue green ramp shells, but this isn't what I want. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. This is three red, red, white, white for a legendary creature, human god, mythic. It's first strike, vigilance. Whenever Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight, or another creature you control attacks, Gwyn deals free damage to target creature and defending uh, target creature defending player controls, and you gain free life. It's a six six. Now this is crazy. The fact it's that it's or card. another creature you control, like right. it's just it's a crazy <laughs> card in EDH. It's a crazy card in EDH. The big thing is that this this is saying, hey, you should run a red white swarm deck. But, yeah. You know, don't that wants to get to eight. <laughs> that, yeah, a red white swarm deck that wants to get to eight mana. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think this just nat like just naturally has issues in play mm -hmm. because like. Well, and it's not it's not black. Dead for three turns, <laughs> or you have a warm body on the field. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. It's very win more. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's very win more and. Like, it's not in black, so we can't reanimate it easily. Um, Could this be a red white to mid range option, or like murder mid range? It's eight. Uh, no, it's seven. It's seven. Uh, I mean, if it was a six drop, maybe. I don't know. The red white mid range decks do have some things, but like, they often want to play Chandra instead at six. Um, yeah, I think Chandra is what stops that. Yeah. But the Tesla Chandra. Fire is at one oh, no. mana less significant option. Mm. Yeah. Tesla would rotate. I could see this being yeah. a mid range option for those colors. It Even stabilizes then. quite nicely. Yeah. I mean does, yeah, it is it is just absurd if you have like even one or two other creatures on the battlefield because it's a huge like even on its own, like a lightning helix a creature still have a blocker once you untap well, it. I yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, once you untap with it, sure. But as in, yeah, it's just a six-six first strike. The turn it comes down if you have nothing right. else. Yeah, which is right. generally yeah, not true, good many enough. Times with Chandra, like many times with Chandra, she doesn't do anything when she enters. Planeswalkers are hard <laughs> to kill, mind you. So our, def but... our defense of the Gwyn is that you know, just even him on an empty board is it's just something to you know have to be be. Uh, Challenged, you can't leave him alone. He, he'll just blow up whatever board he's against. So that in itself is its own right. It's just I don't know. I think there's probably better big targets. Hmm. Okay. Um. So Windlin, Dark Moon, two white, blue. It's a legendary creature, human god, mythic. Has prowess. Whenever and whenever an opponent casts a spell targeting you or a permanent you control, exile target creature, artifact, or enchantments that player controls. And it's a 3 2. Did you uh, mention prowess? Yes, I did mention prowess. Uh, so, your opponent really doesn't want to kill this. Like, as in, this is hard to remove, it protects all your other things, it's a decent body, it seems like it could have a home. It's cheap. <laughs> If there's a white blue tempo y deck or mid range, perhaps, mm. then definitely. Yeah. Like, this oh, yeah. isn't great against pure control decks. 
Um, I don't think, so... like, flyers launch this, but, you know, um, anything slower than flyers, that's blue white. I think we'll want to. If mm -hmm. it flyers might through. even sideboard it. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to lose to Gwendolyn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just... One of the weird things yeah. about control decks is that there are a lot of permanents that do matter. Like, hmm. a, lot, a lot of the, the control decks, uh, I mean, yeah. historically, play Dirty Work before nerfs to that, but um, in the future, they've been a lot of decks that either based around artifacts or enchantments, or even creatures, though. Less creatures, more artifacts and enchantments as their uh, win condition. Hmm. And this stops that. This is very interactive for a slower tempo prowess yeah. deck. So this is like, this is, this card is very punishing against a lot of decks. Like, how do you, I guess you just have to kind of rush past, you, you just rush, yeah, yeah, rush past the body, right? Like, play your cards out better. You, you have to. Let me put it this way if Hollow rotates in, I might sideboard Trail Sickness. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are uh, options against this. this. This dies to Raths, this dies to... We don't have a Pyroclasm, do we? That, yeah, and those are not small in number, so that is yeah. to account for, but like, there's a lot of good targeted removal as well. Well, so I mean, it's yeah. Just, it's a weird card that I think is going to sit well against most decks, and mm. might work the format around it. In yeah, of, yeah. Know, this, card, this, card worries, this card worries me a little, just because... Of how it locks out some strategies, but uh, we'll have to see if the power level ends up being there. Worst case scenario, if you're against it, you just kill the Gwent, you just kill the Gwendolyn and take a hit. It's a you get two for one. Yep. Yeah, that's all it does. Yep. Ah. Uh, all right. One of you guys want to read this? I just need to grab some water. We got next. We got Guinevere, Bountiful Sun. It's a three green white for a mythic legendary creature, human god. Um, zero eight with when Guinevere, Bountiful Sun enters the battlefield, create two, two two green and white knight creature tokens with lifelink named Princess Gold. It also has tap, create a token that's a copy of target aura or equipment that you control. You may attach that token to a creature. You know, initially I hadn't thought about this being playable, but consider it as a sideboard card against aggro in mid-range. It creates a 0-8 wall. It, yeah, it's a 0-8 wall, and then two uh, lifelink tokens. Uh, two twos. Notably, Termahor is rotating out. Um, <laughs> you know, there's not going to be 14 14s for four in the format. Mm -hmm. You're going to have much fairer creatures. This is actually going to block essentially everything on curve that isn't in the air. It's just right. it's just hard for me I, to properly and accurately imagine this card simply because Dreambox rotating. A lot a lot of our evasion is, you know, different now. So yeah, I think like, just playing a fair game on the board is more reasonable than it was before. Okay, like, I'm back. Like, link, like the token set like link it with Termivore, if this would come in, Termivore would be gone, so 08 is super relevant. And if you're running any equipment, you can get the same value. Though. This is true. Like, that equipment is not just flavor text, uh, or that ability is not just flavor text. Uh, it it'll automatically attaches it. And it'll be a weird deck, but yeah. it's certainly just, a powerful ability. I don't know what auras or equipment we're looking for in, mm. in particular. Like, there are you some that you exist. They're in the set. We'll have to see. We'll have if to not, see. Yeah, um, like, but I mean, like, it does say it, it creates, you know, what, uh, 412 worth of yep. power? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Imagine like, it's it's, it's a lot of stuff. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, I wasn't sure how far you can get into it. Okay, well, let's uh, move into the next card. Uh, Izalith, the Great Flame Witch. It's free black red for a legendary creature, human god, mythic. It has desperation. Whenever this creature attacks, it may despair. If it does, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. And then, when is uh, is Lif, Great Flame Witch despairs, search your library for a demon creature card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, then shuffle your library. And it's a 4-4. Okay, what's the biggest, fattest demon we have? Um, discharged. 
Jeez. Um, Is that what we're doing? <laughs> no, no, I'm going to ask you, do you want to run the six grave debt demon deck? <laughs> I kind of want to run the six grave debt demon deck. I mean, grave debt demon hasn't been... Like, grave debt demon was good two rotations ago. It's not so good now. Uh, I don't know. I, well, we're losing some good four drops, and con consistency makes a mediocre card a lot better. It's still one of the best five drops in the format. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> upgrading your four four to a four five isn't that great. Four, five, like, it, and you still get the four fours attack. Yeah, no, I think you want to go bigger. I think you want to go bigger. Mm -hmm. You have to, like, you want to go f like get you know giant like six seven eight mana demons, right? Uh, if you're running eyes with, you are running at least one ceaseless discharge. Oh yeah, because well, it tutors them up. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Up, enters tap and attacking yep. at eight eight, and then and then it's your main phase and you get a ability. Yep. yep. That seems so like it could potentially create a demon shell. Uh it is good if it is allowed to untap though. It is yeah, th five drop. That said, it is a five mana four four with no yep. other text until you untap with it. Yeah. Well it means uh black it, it's it it's definitely a new tool for black red mid range. Uh which uh, yeah, which recently it's been, yeah, Black Red's been definitely leaning more aggressive, the black, the mid-range variants haven't been working as well, but uh, this could definitely give it enough uh, oomph to get, you know, stabilize the game, get a giant creature. Keep an eye out for demons in the future. Yep. Okay, uh, Calamite, Abyss Dragon, it's five Black Red. It's a legendary creature, dragon, a mythic. It has flying, haste, and menace. And if another source would deal damage to an opponent, it deals twice that much damage instead. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. So it's seven. another source. It's 7-7 seven, seven unblockable haste for 7. <laughs> Not and quite unblockable. We do have the flying deck, un which... Unblockable except against the flying deck. And uh, any creatures you already have on board uh, deal twice damage to your opponent. But only to an opponent. Haste. Only to an opponent. Yeah, so it's it's not Furnace of Wrath, right? Uh, it does have haste. Yes, it does have haste. It's very it's seven man hand though. It's just a lot similar to Gwyn, where it's like mm -hmm. you play an aggressive deck or a deck that you know does a lot of damage, and then it's a seven. Right. Granted, I'm awesome. it's a seven seven flyer with haste. Right. Which is not I'm nothing. To say just, uh, it's a source. Not source you control. I feel like there might be something tricky with that in the future. In EDH, yes. <laughs> no, but like, I don't know, this is test magic. Dump, like, Reeve Lock happens. <laughs> uh, those lands don't deal damage, do they? No, do Lorado lands is a payment. Oh, but the, uh, the lands do. Uh, l l I do they? The uh, I don't know. I thought the villains were. Uh, they can't have pay life. Oh, uh, they, they may lose life loss, yes. In, yeah. in any case, I don't see a shell that this naturally belongs in, no. and I don't think it encourages a shell on its own. No. Okay. That's well, let, let's let's move on. To, let's not move on to more giant seven drops. Um, <laughs> Manus, father of the abyss, five black green. It's a legendary creature, Human Horror. It has Menace, and whenever Menace Father of the Abyss enters the battlefield or attacks, you may have it fight target creature. If a creature dealt damage by Menace would die, exile it instead. This is Fight Titan. So, you what could, I could see this as a control win con. It enters its removal, and then its removal every time it attacks. Yeah, but a lot of people yep. right there on one body. Hmm. I think, I don't know, Junk? As of late, has been really low to the ground, yeah. but if there's a slower build, yeah. I guess it's being run as it's stronger. It could even be another part of Sultai, Sultai mm. control. Hmm. Oh, mm. or a curse by the build. Okay. I mean, aren't you just aren't you just playing like the Nito? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Like Kakarako, I love the big croc. He's not removal. He's not <laughs> removal. He has the hex proof. But he's not removal. Um, ca uh, casual, just uh, maybe set your mic up a little bit. 
I can't turn up anymore. Best I, can. I can't turn you up anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Are we ready to move on? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, Seif, Scaleless Betrayer. This is free blue red for a mythic legendary creature, Dragon Wizard. It's flying and indestructible. And then whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to you, sacrifice a dragon. Uh, two blue red, return Seif Scaleless Betrayer to its owner's hand, draw two cards, then discard a card at random, and it's a 6-6. Six, six. So this Not card has a lot... Part of the cost. Yes. This has a lot of tension in it. Been responded to. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's a lot of tension in that, you know, 6-6 six, six flying indestructible for 5 mana. <laughs> um, yeah. But... If they get a, it's if a they... lot of stats for five mana. I, for one, am really excited about this just because of how it plays against a lot of the room. It's really hard to kill. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to argue that it's like big Samuel Delker. You think? <laughs> it, four mana from the grave. Draw. Two cards and no. the no, 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 it's not no, from the grave. No. That's from play. That's from the battlefield. Oh, this is this no. is. Oh, it's an ether ruling. Yes. Yeah, this, this, yes. this is a control deck killer, Maybe right? Protective. Yeah. Okay, it, it, yeah. This, this is, is a key. control finisher for blue red, probably blue red white, maybe blue red black, but probably blue red. Yeah. Wait, did you say control finisher or control it's a killer? Control killer. Yeah. It's a control killer, right? As in, like, Ooh. this is for mirrors. You should, cause, mm. because cause they can't deal they, with they, they don't have yeah yeah. I mean, they, they, they have a very good way of dealing with it. They play their <laughs> own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There I mean, are options to to and then stop. You return it to your hand, obviously. And dr yeah, you return it to your hand, draw two cards. You know, yeah. you, like, I mean, I haven't seen that many blue red control lists as of late. I mean, yeah, there haven't been any incentives to do so. Yeah. This is one of them. I've seen black red, I've seen like Esper, so there's definitely good red and blue control cards. I like this as a. F what I like about this as a finisher is, unlike Krakow, you don't have to tap out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Krakow's, I mean, yeah, it's a lot this more when expensive. You have nine mana up to protect <laughs> it in one way or another. Yeah. Hmm. You can also just like control most of your opponent's creatures and leave a big one up and. What are they going to do? Attack your 6x indestructible? Hmm. Mm. Leave it as a blocker. Yeah, it's difficult. Now, we're going to talk about the card that's very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> 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 out, Simon. One black red for a two loyalty planeswalker. His name is Trusty Patches. You see, for plus one, each player discards a card and will hear she sacks sacrifice the creature. Minus two, search your library for non-land card and exile it, then shuffle your library. You may play that card of this turn. Minus three, target opponent gets an emblem with creatures you control attack each combat to fable. That minus three is flavor text as hell, <laughs> but this is a Liliana that can also be a tutor. Liliana can be a tutor. <laughs> Wrong one. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this card's it, disgusting. It is pretty fucking good. So I built a preliminary hollows chunk list like I did for all the stuff coming in. Uh, possibly coming in. And what I like about patches, it allows you to run silver bullets in the sideboard if you're running a lot of patches already. Like, this is I, uh, like Chandra. This allows you to go to one of Chandra and consistently get it when you want it. Which is a problem because with a lot of mid range decks, you just get choked up on five and six drops. So it's just, I can't play all these Chandras against your army of twos and fours. Hmm. Yep, but now with patches, you can. It's. Though. Like, if you untap with them, that is. The one mark against is that this isn't as consistent as Liliana. Like, the plus one isn't uh, just a straight edict. Your opponent has the option. So, if you as the mid range deck are actually on the back foot, you're probably going. I think you're with looking the... at it wrong, though. Like, this. If, don't think of the plus one as an edict. Think of it as 
Liliana's plus one that allows you to sacrifice your crop getting slime. Oof, that's True. spicy. <laughs> it is, uh, it is. Though, like, again, it's a, just a minor mark. I think this card is, you know, you know, the money card of our fictional set, but all the same. Mm, well, free mana, yeah, free mana walkers are often more powerful than they look than they look, and this already looks powerful. So, I'm kind of worried about this card, but uh, we'll have to see. Yep. We'll see uh, how it ruins the format. <laughs> we I can always the, nerf it. Uh, Mid range have a real reason to be red. Hmm. Yep. Well, you know, we did see some spicy, like you know, uh, black red mid-ranged cards earlier, so this could definitely, you know, mm -hmm. lead in that direction. Because uh, also combo with uh, Desperation, because Sack Trigger on Desperation is in-step. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so you can sacrifice... Patches, second main. There's yeah. a lot of such synergy, but yes, Patches is certainly one of them. Okay, let's uh, get on to the final mythic of the set. This is Velka, Arbiter of Sin, 2, white, black, it has lifelink, death touch, Whenever Vilka, Arbiter of Sin, or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may have each player gain two life, otherwise each player loses two life. And it's a free free. What do we think about this for some sort of black-white shell? This is quite finicky, but it's useful in so many situations that I'm not going to count it out at no. all. Right. Well, well, like, it, it just... holy moly, does, like, black-white, um, you're just like, oh my, big play... Girl. Well, you play you play this against okay. uh, you play this against uh, what's it called against aggro decks, and they're just so sad. <laughs> well, it's just it's very different. Like I actually uh, the part I'm not seeing is not the the body itself, but just the the uh, the battlefield effect. Like well, if that's you what can, I if you can consistently get a, a deck that can produce you know three four creatures each turn, that's an eight point life sway. Mm, mm. Velka, that's huge. Like, Velka is a huge. Well, no, it's not a life swing because it's each range. player. Now, oh, it's, it's each player. Yeah, it's each player, yeah. so it's not a life swing. It's both life totals moving in whichever direction is convenient for you. Which True. usually you want one or the other. Like, yep. let's be honest, the deck that runs Velka doesn't mind if the opponent has life. Yeah, well, they have this another is... way to close it. This is uh, such a this I is such a flexible card, right? Aristocrats real. Mm-hmm. Yes. Definitely against aristocrats. Um, so in you play this ag against aggro, it's a lifelink wall that uh, also gains you a shit ton of life uh, from the trigger. Against mid range, it's it kills a thing bigger than you and it moves life in whichever direction is convenient at the time. At control, it speeds up your clock. Um, no matter what you're playing it against, this is a solid, yeah. even if it's really finicky. Mm, mm. I also and... really like how it punishes uh, greedy decks with Lorado lands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've already been running away from Lorado lands only because aggro is so good and yeah. life is so precious. But like I think this card will this card will see a lot of play. It's just, it's so finicky, and I'm not sure how satisfied I'm going to be with the actual play. I've but she that. just does a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I got like it as a check in the format. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I definitely like it being in the format. Um, but we'll have to uh, see where it lands. But I'll, uh, yeah, because one thing I like is just how the black-white decks like they could often be very variable in like if they get an early start or not, right? Like sometimes you'll play like Baral turn turn two, and you know play like another good creature turn three, and you know get like actually reasonably aggressive. But then other times you just would be you know stuck in board stalls or like getting really pressured mm -hmm. by an aggro deck. Um, you had such a variety, and that it's just such a card that allows you to uh, be really flexible in a lot of situations um, against a lot of different decks, either closing out the mm -hmm. game or stabilizing yourself. Okay, uh, let's move on to the rares. We have a Knight's Protection. This is one and a white, sorcery, rare, search your library for a knight creature card and reveal it. Put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. You gain four life. So, knight's tutor. What... Are there any good knights currently in the format? I know this set will bring a lot in. Many of them, well, in the set, you said currently though. 
Yes. Uh, is Baral a knight? <laughs> and Baral is not a knight. Baral is a soldier. Um, however, if I do a ver uh, if I quickly pull up um, Law Seeker. Law Seeker. Yes. Let's see what we can find. Um, Ace Holden. Ace Holden's a knight? Well, that's kind of spicy. That's pretty nice. Oh, yeah. So the, uh, I don't As know. is Fort Eighth Redemption Death. Ranger. Oh, no. I think Death. both of those want to be here. In a mid-range deck, I think Knight's Protection is a mid-range card, but I don't think Ace Holden is the card you want to fetch. Mm. Yeah. He's good as part of a toolbox, but he alone is not enough. Sure. The rest of Hollows is enough. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yep. We'll see how this goes. But the game for life is also really relevant. Like, in a deck that just runs a few knights, you might run this as a sideboard card. If one of your knights is, like, fairly good against aggro, then you gain four life and draw that card that you want. So, two last things. Uh, first of all, this makes your dumb have a combo deck that crushes the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, second thing, there is a particular knight with first strike that we will see that makes aggro cry. Oh. Which All right. one? All right. Chosen okay. by the Lords. Two and a white. Sorcery. Uh, choose target creature you control. Tap all other creatures. Put a plus one counter on the chosen creature for each creature tapped this way. Note that this doesn't say tap all other creatures you control. Mmm. Mmm. So you're getting a huge alpha strike and it's kind of an anti-swarm card? This is interesting. This is, um... A sideboard card for tempo decks, right? Like Perhaps. flyers or Gwendolyn. Yes, yeah, flyers. Oh man, this in flyers is going to be absurd. I don't think it's a card for flyers. Really? One of the problems with, yeah, like I think the problem, like I don't think you, I think you play this against flyers. I don't think you play it for flyers. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with flyers is that what you're generally doing is you're building up an entire board. You're both going wide and tall. Um, you don't need the tap effect. You have flyers. They probably don't. Right. Mm. I, I was more thinking mirror, but I guess those are rare. Yeah, uh, I, I, I do agree. You know, it's useful in the mirror, but not useful enough to waste a, you know, a precious sideboard slot. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is ground versus other ground mid range or flyers. Uh, counter deck. Man, well, well we lose Jamara, so the counter's deck mm -hmm. kind of falls apart. I'm not sure the plus yes. one plus one counter deck actually works anymore. I think it's once it rotates, uh, yep. which is very mm -hmm. unfortunate, but uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that deck was very fun. Uh, but yeah, this card, I think, uh, the power level's there, it'll need to find the right shell, and it's more a sideboard card than, than a main deck card. Let's move on. It's really on. weird evaluating what situation you use it, but right. yeah, otherwise I'm ready. Okay, uh, this is Elite Captain. This is one the white for a creature, human knight. We'll note that, it's a knight. <laughs> uh, whenever another token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Elite Captain. And it has hollow for one white white, and it's two two. Uh, this is no. just... In the right oh, deck, you untap with this. Worst case scenario, it's Colonian Tusker. Hmm. Three, three, right? uh, no, it's another token. So even on the, the... in the right deck. I mean, oh, it's, because it's... you always have a token in the right deck. Sure, but like, like, mm -hmm. uh, flyers could splash this with a skyship mm -hmm. prop juice. <laughs> <laughs> could... That could I, be so. I don't think flyers can splash this. I think flyers is too reliant upon every single card in that deck having the text flying because of all the Tesla cards. I think this would spawn its own offshoot deck, being a literal tokens deck, and I think right. there are the tools for that. The real question is, is what are the tokens tools that Hollow provides at specifically uncommon and common? Okay. I think Elite Captain makes his own. I'm also going to argue that this could be a Blood Artist for uh, hmm. aristocrats. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's yeah, like it's just like build. it's a. Aristocrats doesn't always want to build a lot of tokens. Yeah, like, it's, it's, this, this isn't Blood Artist, um, this is Champion of the Parish. I, Twice. No, I think like the ones in Custom Standard are tokens. Yeah. Like, like, we're not forgetting that if this is, you know, if this is like ever getting one or... counter, <laughs> and then yeah, coming back... Counter, oh, yeah. It's, like, really solid. Yep. Yeah, if it gets one counter, it's, it's a... Dies, it draws you a card. 
Yeah, well, as in you can you play know. it again. Like, it, of... this... Ah, this is crazy. Uh, but I, I like it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I think I think he makes his own deck. Anyway, um... I think it's a super fair white reader. Yeah. Hmm. Let's move on to the next card. Oh, just have... one more note. One more note first. All hollows are tokens. Yes. Uh, yes. When, when they return. So, yeah. Yep. Wins desperation. Two white white for a sorcery. As additional cost to cast Gwyn's desperation, sacrifice a creature. Destroy all creatures. This is the fair <laughs> for mana wrath, right? Right. Yeah. Oof, it's really good. <laughs> um, you know what I said about green white mid-range decks being low to the ground? I think this might fix that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is and a powerful wrath. Hollow creatures, you can just flash in a hollow after you do this, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, Although, sure. You, know, you need to have lots of mana. Yeah. But yeah. you can sacrifice your creature with hollow and then do it, it yeah. once you have the mana. Yep. Um, or just do it next turn, right? Like, untap. Yeah, you know you have a creature in your hand because you sack it and it has hollow. Yeah. And then also you can uh, sacrifice a prop by guiding the slime and still have a 3 3. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, actually. Uh, no, you won't. Well, you, well, you have a three-three if you sacrifice the original card. Yes, yes. yes. If you you sacrifice the, one, the one. original propagating slime. Yes. Which is neat. <laughs> all right. It's like an uh, onion. Yeah. Okay. This yeah, card. This card's right. like we're all just going to say this card's going to see lots of play. So. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I guess I, I'm not sold on being ubiquitous. I think it's good for mid-range decks. Everything in this set so far seems really good for mid-range. Simon, <laughs> yeah. have fun. <laughs> uh, so Caliber will enjoy this next one Yes, Priest of Velka White, creature human cleric, 1-1 one, one. Sacrifice Priest of Velka Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn Hollow, 1 and a block So, this is a quite solid protective card On Heartless Some part that you sideboard in modern black baby bears um, And it, it comes back for more Hmm, yeah um, I mean the main issue. Oh my god, I d I can't. Oh well, your voices are going a bit weird. One second. Yeah, like this might a little bit of a bug which is hard to play, and some amount of where it's uh, protect, but that's a little dated. It is pretty similar to benevolent bodyguard. I was thinking one that gives protection from red. I don't remember the exact card. Uh, uh, the Forge Tender. Uh, yeah, Barrenton Forge Tender, yeah. Uh, so, this is that twice, in, if you're in the right colors. It might even see play in mono white decks, just because the front side is decent, if you need the protection. Yeah, I can but also that, see... What'd you say? Uh, I can... Simon, you see it a bit. Sorry, it's not tap sack, by the way. So even though the hollow enters tapped from the graveyard, you can just win a combat. That's quite a good point. Casual? Uh, my only th point is that I don't think this is a four of index. I think this is a, you know, some of. No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I do dislike about this is the tracking of the hollow because you can flash it in as a hollow instant speed and then mm -hmm. give a creature yep. indestructible. I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that design wise and uh, yeah, like I know it's a rare but it's still gonna trip people up and be a pain in the ass. Um, Understandable. Okay, uh, Solaire's talisman it is one white. A legendary artifact equipment. Well, we were looking for good equipment with uh, Havel, so take note. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two plus O, and whenever you cast a spell, equipped creature gains indestructible until on the turn. Equip one. Is this what we're looking for? I mean, this card seems amazing uh, in Nihiri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely wants this. Oh yeah, boy. Um, wants this. If the cast trigger is a, is uh, a little odd, but it's still it's still perfectly usable. Yes. Does let's take zero path successful red white aggro build. Would it want this? Yup. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yup. Perhaps. It's a little expensive. It's a quick one. Yeah. It's just. 
The deck doesn't run that many instants, I think. No, it well, you don't need them. Um, you just uh, like I mean, you just play stuff first main phase and be indestructible. Right, right, right. And then it's indestructible. The big thing is, are there good attack triggers that just don't care if your opponent blocks? Well, we may like, see one in red later. Yeah, who wouldn't show? Ah. Oh, and, and also there's desperation ah. cards and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. if you want that. Yes, definitely. Um, but I yeah, don't like... Think you use this with desperation, but yes. But I mean, even just like, the, it's giving lots of cheap power, and uh, you know, the the Nihiri deck definitely lost some of its uh, like good artifacts, so yes. this is going to you know make a, that deck have a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. Yeah. Having a, an equip cost of one is huge for that. Oh, deck. yeah. So oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing some of this. Okay. Um, right. Tarkus, the ready? Iron Knight. Right. Two white whites. Legendary creature, Human Knight. So it can be tooted up. Uh, rare, who has first strike and vigilance. Prevents all non combat damage that would be dealt to creatures you control. And it's a free four. This is, seems crazy. You can't. Yep. This, you can't. It's a great uh, sideboard against red control uh, because those damage based drafts are quite good actually yep. yeah well as in even it, it prevents it even just being like removed by regular like all your creatures being removed by regular burn this is this is, true. This is just very very good and it has first strike so like none of your small creatures can interact with it either and vigilance and it's vigilance aggro as well for the same reason yeah well um, like actually really fair because you wouldn't play it just for the body. Right. Hmm. And you only play it against red decks really. I see like a check in the format more than it is a powerhouse. Right. Like yeah. I think on its own it's not necessarily enough, but like just as a way of dealing with aggressive aggro and mid range decks, particularly the red variety, this is, you know, a card that will see some play. Yep. Um, Wondrous Incandescence. One white white enchantment. Whenever Wondrous Incandescent or a creature you control enters the battlefield under your control, uh, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Hmm. Velka dot deck. No, 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 no. Not Velka dot deck. Not Velka dot deck. Mm -hmm. So, one of the, the sets that we have in our format is Tesla. <laughs> this curves. Revolutionary Herald? Revolutionary <laughs> Herald. Where you curve, you know, turn two, do whatever, probably play it to a drop. Turn yeah. three, play this. Turn four, play the three bodies, two of which are three, three hastes. On the following turn, four, because. Four hastes. Wait. Yeah. Um, four, four hastes. No, they are four, four hastes. Yeah, they're four, four hastes. <laughs> On the next turn, assuming they all survive. You tap, you then play another set of 4-4 four, four haste and except, kill your opponent. No, 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 except they're actually 5-4 trample haste. No, they're 4-3. 4-3. Oh, sorry, 4-3 trample haste. Oh, trample uh, haste. Sure. The only two five, of them entered the battlefield, unless you play something else. Yeah, it's true. Which yeah, is yeah. perfectly doable. Um, all the that's same. <laughs> practical use. That's the practical use. I think this might make Goblin Express real. Uh, Goblin <laughs> Express lists that I've built. <laughs> Revolutionary Herald as just a value card. Well, Revolutionary Wonders Herald, yeah. Goblin Express turns it on every turn. Haste is a big boon. Yeah. Because um, the creature entering also gets plus one. I mean, people could try making the Revolutionary decks. People could do like all kinds of things with this. Um, yep. Yeah, this card... And yeah, because... General tokens decks are good with it, too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this card will be quite powerful for its stay here. Spicy, oh. spicy. Um, yeah, so like, because we haven't really had a, like, we've had ag like pure aggro decks, but we haven't really had a tokens deck for a while, right? Mm. Out outside of like not, flyers. Not... Uh, it's making good arguments. Yep, it's definitely <laughs> making good arguments. Uh, flyers probably doesn't play this. You think? I don't know. No. Yeah, because I, I think this is specifically for tokens. Which I think will take form of red, white, and white tokens. Yeah. The... Okay, but let's uh, move on to Big Hat Logan. Oh man, we have a lot of hat sets in our uh, <laughs> in custom standard. Nice uh, hat. Uh, two blue, blue legendary creature, human wizard prowess. 
Desperation. So whenever this creature attacks, it may despair. If you do, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. And when it despairs, cast target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard without paying its mana cost. What was the nine what cost? Uh, what was the nine cost yeah. cards we were looking yeah. at earlier? <laughs> Cease something. Cease, Cease betrayal. Revolution? Betrayal. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this should exile the card it casts, or else you can it, do more. I mean, well, it doesn't have to because it dies. Like, yeah. this, is, this is a legendary creature who dies in the act of, you know. Well, no, no, because what if you what if you cast? Thing. Doesn't this go infinite if you cast a uh, extra combat spell? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, if it doesn't die on blocks. Yes. But still. Yeah. There's a lot of assumptions there. Yeah. Well, um, anyway, it might be a possible change that could be made. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, uh, yeah. for safety reasons. Um, Perhaps. like. Oh, I, th I, 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 I think, think there are shenanigans to do. I think there's a lot of shenanigans to do with it. I just don't see it being a constructed staple. I think it's, you know, like... Oh, oh. I think there's a lot of of dream scenarios that occur, but I think just... Yeah, like no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I I, I, I'm agreeing. You might draw two cards. This card is m definitely unlikely at the moment to be constructed playable, but... Uh, yeah, it has implications, you know, in formats with far more, you know, far more prevalent, larger, you know, spells and whatever, just to create loops, which aren't necessarily a healthy thing. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh. Yeah, but anyway, I like the design. It's cool. Uh, let's yeah, look at... neat. I just... I'm not on, on, on board. Sure. So, Crossing the Fog. This is blue for a sorcery. Journey three times. It's ancestral recall, kind of. Not Later. really. <laughs> Later, yeah. yeah. That you have to have ancestral lots of creatures. Journey. I mean, does Play this in the Flyers plays this right with the mythic? <laughs> yeah, with the uh, with the one that gets a creature from your oh. journey, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. the one journey something good, whatever yeah. that you yeah. can get out. You you know you can get out. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, the, like, cause the absurd, the absurd thing with this is that, like, you the journey can be like saved up, right? Like, is if you can e you can cast this turn, uh, turn one and not uncomfortably not be attacking till like turn five or six, and you're still gonna get the cards eventually. Like, um, sure. but yeah, draw three cards. You yes, do have to work with one. Yes, yes, it is a lot worse when you top deck it because if you're behind, mm. it doesn't draw you into what you need. Uh, but yeah, like I could see, you know, some sort of I could see like a lot of blue based tempo decks playing this. I can see flyers definitely playing one or two copies. Um, you know, potentially <laughs> potentially more on the sideboard. Potentially. Um Yeah, this card has a has the power level. It's just uh you have to find out what shells. Uh yeah. Right. I just I'm curious to find the shell for it, if there is a sp explicit journey shell, and I am not quite convinced there is one yet, but we'll see. I think crossing the fog might bring Civ back to life. Oof. Yes, possibility. So yeah, play blue-red right. tempo again. Yeah, that could be spicy. Um, okay, but let's move on uh, to Dark Moon Bow. This is a single blue mana for another legendary artifact equipment at rare. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, when that player casts his or her first spell on his or her next turn, counter that spell unless he or she pays one, has equipped one. So it's this is really annoying. This is real annoying to play against. It means you're playing yeah. one mana behind. Uh, so one of the important things to this is that one of the powers of the early builds in the Heary with Ankhret was that there was a one mana equipment. This, by the nature of being one man equipment with Nahiri in the format, is worth considering a blue white Nahiri tempo list. That's mm. fair. That said, I think outside of that, I think it's annoying, but I don't like. I don't think it can be that good simply because it is a legendary equipment. You can't get multiple of these. You can't stack the effect unless you have, you know, double strike. But that's not. Smart. <laughs> it's a huge tempo game once you do it, though. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. True. So you probably don't run it as a four of for that oh, reason. You... Hmm. But um, in this well, hypothetical blue whitelist, do you main board Gwendolyn? I don't know. It depends upon your curving. I think you could. I don't think you want to. I think like I think the game plan is still try to set up Just top out at three. Yeah, top mm -hmm. out at three mana. Mm -hmm. we, we would have to see. Yeah, I think it has potential alongside Nahiri. I think outside of that, it's not enough. It's slightly, it's slightly a bit too clunky for like the flying deck. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's not quite what they want. Uh, they just want to be playing more flyers. Um, yep. To, yeah. Anyway, but uh, it's certainly an interesting card. I like the design. Um, Okay, uh, even if the wording's a little messy, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, Logan's Isolation. This is four blue-blue enchantment or a rare enchant creature. You control enchanted creature. Enchanted creature has hexproof. How's this for a control finisher? No? <laughs> I think it's pretty nice, but uh, it's probably not playable. It's, it's inconstructed. Yeah, yeah. Course. This is a this is a to be like a sideboard card in control against midrange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Midrange is usually calling control with either whatever small creatures could remain or planeswalkers as their top end. Hmm. I I think it's super cool tool for custom EDH, which yes. I think has already started. Mm -hmm. Custom EDH, one. woo! I, I do agree that I think it is poorly positioned against the the types of threats controls running right. against. Yes, mm. Mm. I like the design a lot. The yes. Flavors on point. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Moonlight butterfly. This is free blue blue creature insect. It has flash and flying. And when it enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell, and you may choose new targets for the copy. And it's a four four. And so four four flash four, flying. Four flash flying. Yeah. Yeah, that that That's is a pretty big deal. The, nothing to uh, skip over. This is the first of many of much love given to a blue green flash deck in this set. <laughs> I personally okay. enjoy it a lot. Like, I guess, but we. It, it's, it's still. I don't it, think reverberating on ETB is that good. Right. For five mana, you have to hold up. Five mana. Yeah, that's and a lot. That wants to be holding up a bunch of mana anyway. Um, you don't. You don't play it primarily for the right. reverberate. You play Every it for the flash deck. Flying, want but... to be go to five. Okay, consider it just. Well, a, just as a four-four four, four, flash, flash flyer. Flying, it's it's just that blocks line. your it blocks your thing, I and then think of that one is worth it. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I, I think I'm kind of between you two. I think this is good as a tool for the flash deck. However, um, I still think I'm still not that huge on it. Like it's just a four four flash flyer. It, like constructed, that's blocks, like the only time it blocks profitably is against archetypes where you're not running five drops game two. And I don't know, maybe if there is an insane taking turns deck, you run the same side. Or an insane uh, seeps betrayal deck. You're in the it's side. it's yeah. not even good as a alternative for say like a like I don't know a weird torrential gear Hulk. Like you like you I could potentially see this as like a control mirror thing. But like the instance of sorceries you're copying are like strangely positioned. Like stealing a shock with this. Oh, sorry, copying a shock with this isn't that great. That's fair. Mm, I, yeah. I'm not I actually super convinced by this, except in a po as a possible inclusion in, in a blue-green flash deck. But even then, I'm kind of skeptical. Right. Okay, actually, could it be a control mirror card? That's what I was suggesting. Yes. And so my my what I was what I was about to come to the conclusion of is I don't think it is now. Now the the issue is you don't. Like, there's still nothing good to hit. Like, there's no real good spells other than, you know, counter your counter at best. <laughs> um, I think, you know, when we inevitably introduce sets that do have good instant sorcery to cast, this is a consideration. But I think for now, I don't think it does enough. Uh, I can agree with that. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. 
Um, Petrification. This is two and a blue sorcery. Exile target creature. Its controller creates a colorless artifact token named Petrified Venture with tap add colorless to your mana pool. Um, it's not sacrifice, it's, it's just like... a tap. It turns him into a mana rock. This is yep. uh, imprisoned in the moon, right? Yeah, a... yes. It's so much worse than imprisoned in the moon. It can't hit as many things. Like, Imprisoned in the Moon turns their land into this, right? It turns their... Planeswalker. Planeswalker, right? It's creature, yeah, land, or planeswalker. Um, this is a source... A three mana... It, gift of the, This is Gift of the Dohar, but worse. Like, yeah. well, I mean... It's relevant in so many matchups where you want it. No, the, it's also relevant that it can't be removed. Yes. Right. The other thing is, this is just a blue kill spell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even even with the tempo gain, this does a lot. This this helps a lot of decks that want to keep the two colors to avoid, you know, paying twelve life for their lands, mm. you know, mm. to kill creatures yeah, at the cost of tempo. I well, guess I'm just skeptical of a three mana sorcery speed source. Yeah, was in was yeah. was in present in the moon play, like I don't think so. Yes, but it can hit more things than just creatures. Oh, but it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't even played yeah. that much, if I remember. Like, yeah. the, uh, but you know, we know. It's uh, It's gonna be a contextual thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, th I think this is gonna be a a card that allows a lot of decks to exist, given the number of very large mid rangey threats that mm. are protective against, uh, you know, say blue. Like this mm. stops uh, Seath. This stops. Uh, What's it? The uh, Tarkus. Yeah. I think yeah. blue red and blue white want this card. I don't think any other pair wants it. it okay. Maybe blue green if that exists. I guess well, I could see play if, like, I could also see having play if all of the mana fixing disappears. <laughs> like it fades out, and but, control is like hurting for. Well, control. well, uh, look, yeah. I think control needs the tools. So as in, control yeah. hasn't been amazing. This is, Recently, this is a tool. Um, I I don't think it'll ever be a four of unless there's something really wrong with the format that mm. something must be exiled on <laughs> turn three or four. I right, um, quote the designer: "This was meant to be safety valve, so it accomplished its goal." Yep, I, yeah. I I think it does that job well. Uh, let's look I'll, at Ring Thief. I'll bring this in. Soon. Now let's talk about a spicy inclusion back from the hell of RTR. <laughs> if it's mini Aetherling. <laughs> um just different. It's a lot smaller, right? Like two and a blue, two free. Blue gets plus one, minus one, or minus one plus ones on the turn. Uh two mana, oh, one and a blue, it can't be blocked. Two and a blue gains hexproof. So it doesn't have the return itself, so, so it doesn't dodge wraths. And uh yeah. what else? And it's real sickness. But also because it's not a four five, it like can't get up to like six, seven, eight power, right? Yeah, this gets up to four power tops before yeah. it dies. So it's and, like it, can't, it asks a lot more mana out of you once it's on the board, yeah. which I like. I think it's still playable. It's nice for when Kakraka leaves, especially. Mm. It's a relevant blocker against Agra. Two, yes, three, yes, two. yes. It's uh, so hard to deal with. One of the big knocks against it is that just the hexproof mode is three mana, and I think most of the lines I'm seeing it as like unless you're playing it literally like an eighth of like on turn six, seven, eight, like so, it's just it's hard to keep alive. Well, I disagree yeah. a little bit. I think you run it in. Well, because it's so cheaper, it doesn't do a good tempo impression. Well, because because it's so cheaper, you don't you're not like. If you play it out early, you're not like miserable if it's, uh, you know, killed. Um, but also, loss. yeah, it's yeah, killed, right. Yeah. It's it's not like the, your whole game plan. Um, but also, like, it depends on how many like free mana instants people are playing. Like, if we're playing lots of free mana counter spells, it's possibly a lot more protected. Um, you know, if you can untap with it. So, uh, additionally, with this is that there's a lot of cards in this set that encouraged me to run sacrifice effects, which we actually do have a lot of. Mm. So I am just less enthused by this card than I normally do when I look we're, up Yeah, we're, we're, we're losing a few of them. We're losing 
Achilles' mandates, uh, or losing... Uh, I guess that's about it, right? Uh, I just appreciate how flexible it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a it very, spi flexible. very spiky card. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, let's I move on. I think we ought to try to speed up a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, okay. Soul Confluence for blue, blue, sorcery. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into three piles. Put the cards in one pile into your graveyard. Put the cards in another pile into your hand. Exile the cards in the third pile. Then for each non-land card exiled this way, you may cast that card without paying its man cost. As a sixth mana sorcery, I like this for my dumb blue green ramp deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is a six mana sorcery, but it's just yeah. so hard to evaluate. Just like it's hard to play. Well, yeah. uh, this I'm actually going to say that this will be really good early on. Then people will learn how to make piles. <laughs> like, like, until it's going to be good until players stop being trash. I don't know. Which I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think this is quite good enough, right? I think. I don't think it's quite good enough either. But like, I think. Like, I think it has the high potential. It's just loads of value. Like, well, that's only five cards. Yeah. And what I mean by <laughs> only is you have a lot of control over what goes into your hand yeah. and what you cast. Okay. You okay. Okay. This this gets silly if you flip more soul confluences with your soul confluence. There you go. You did it. <laughs> just like, just say like, I'm not, I'm not winning this game, but I'm making this turn go on forever. Wait, anyway. wait. With uh, Tall Tales in this, you oh no, to try to and tribal. Tribal. <laughs> <laughs> makes your Moving opponent. Moving on. <laughs> yep. Uh, All right. Artorius, Artorius, the Abyss Walker, yep. two black black legendary creature, human knight, four three. First strike, menace, and at the beginning of each end step, if you lost life this turn, put a plus one counter on Atorius Abyss Walker. Jeez, so, it has first strike? Getting Tarmivore with menace. Jeez. It's not the same as Tarmivore with menace. It's it, This is a 5 4 first strike. Like, this is. There are pain lands in the format. It's going to be as big as you need it to be. Yeah, it's just. This this seems absurd. It's a it's a knight. It it fits. Oh so my god! Many you can search it up. So you played black white. Yeah. yeah. I it's I kind of hate. One of the, I yeah, kind of hate that this has first strike. The green uh, four drops that are rotating out. Yeah. Which are the strongest yeah. four drops in the format. Yep. Yeah. Um, like the evolutionary herald, of course. Black is the new green. Oh mm -hmm. my god! This is yeah. This card's right. real good. Okay. All right. Artorius's Cursed Greatsword. Two black legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three and plus oh and has menace and has the equip cost of discarding a card or paying five life. <laughs> what a great equip cost. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. But I'm not, the payoff's not good enough, right? So one place that I thought this was actually usable is in an aggro mirror. Um, hmm. Because in an aggro mirror, the they'll usually have like one blocker up and two creatures attacking you. The additional life is relevant, and you can discard a card because the the threat of being overwhelmed by card advantage is not that significant. Additionally, strapping this on Aruzio and Azuria, you can discard the card you know at will. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, think but... this has niche cases. I don't think it's going to be ubiquitous. Yeah. Well, the but fast... where it's good, it's great. <laughs> All right. Okay. Simon. Oh yes. We're about to talk about the greatest teeth in the game: Dark Walker <laughs> Serpent, two black black for three three. Look at this type line: Serpent Advisor. <laughs> sure. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Unless an opponent has to draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the converted mana cost of that card. So it's Bloodshot Coach Thief with more value. <laughs> Jeez. It's insane. This card's insane. He advises I... you to play mid-range. Why, why is this four mana? <laughs> yeah, I... This card scares me okay, in bad ways. Okay, you have to untap with it. Sure. You have to untap with a lot of the cards you've got. Yeah. No, no, it's no, no, it's not a May. 
So it's not a May, which means this will kill you in some matchups. Sure, but you also get to target the card. Like, in, in mid range, you have a lot of targets that you've already burned through. Like the yeah. first issue of uh, Propagating Slime, or that uh, Pioneer Researcher that probably died to cast your turn three Dark Soccer Sir. Also, going to say we're losing Unrecognized Horizon. That mm. is a big thing for this. That song. is a big thing. Yep. We do yep. have Seda Wayfinder, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still a big thing. There's um, still a lot of options for that effect, but there are not what that. Uh, okay, so this, like this card, I think someone's going to build a deck with it. It's going to be disgusting, and then depending on how disgusting and ubiquitous it ends up, we may it may <laughs> need changing. I, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if this card would need to have its text changed due to custom sand. I don't even think it will need its text changed. I think three toughness is the thing that scares me the most. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it, like, three two or two two is about where this wants to be. So it can be nice oh. to dream. I mean, it just seems like it wants to be a five drop. Yeah. I don't the know. The new shots, jeering which, theme, jeering which, theme, which there are. Yeah, jeering theme two. All right. Are we ready? Yep. Ruben? Okay, yes, yeah, 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 continue. Uh, Decaying Dragon. Decaying... Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Decaying Dragon is free black black, it is a creature dragon, has flying, has hollow, black black, and sacrifice two creatures. And it's a 6 free. Woof! 6 free. Yeah, uh, so, I guess... No, no, this is black green... No, this... they printed something like this in Commander, I mean. Yeah, the uh, but like that was dragon only, right? As in, it was you had to play other dragons. This is just play it in black green uh, aristocrats or like uh, mm -hmm. or abzan aristocrats, and you're just laughing. This card six it's three kills so, so quickly. I hate it without sack outlets because I don't want to cast a three toughness creature oh. for five mana. And and remember, right. hollow is instant speed. This is instant speed sack. Yeah, this is a for discard out. This yeah, is so. I'm not, so one of, one of my analysis of this is that I'm not even actually excited about the hollow side. I'm just excited about the front side. This is <laughs> a very decent uh, desecration demon impression. It's just a six three flyer. Like a lot sure. of decks can't interact with this. Hmm. Granted, so... it's not a six six blocker, but like just as the aggressive part of it, it's an option. Yeah. With the hollow side. Even if you're just sacking tokens, you're at least going two for one when this gets removed. Oh, but I, 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 right. I think like, you have to both. I think you have to want both sides because it's so fragile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like as in the fight. I don't. I wouldn't be playing the front side by itself, and the back side. I don't think we quite have enough discard outlets yeah. at the moment to make I it work. I think it's just a little, a little too awkward to have a home. Like, but, the, like this, I would not be surprised if we found one. Yeah, but this, I don't. See this card seems a lot safer to me than the uh, Darkstalker segment, for example, that we just talked about. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, all right, yeah, Could okay. we... yes. Uh, yeah. Fall from favor, three black for an instant. Destroy target creature. If that creature was legendary, search his controller's graveyard, hand a library for all cards with the same name as that creature, and exile them. Then the player shuffle his or her library. Zoo, thank you for safety, Val. <laughs> it's Pun day aside for creatures. Um, I really like that this kills Artorius. <laughs> uh, that kills Baral. It does not kill Krakow. Uh, if it can. Like, control decks do tap out with Krakow sometimes. Yeah. That's not or the yeah, problem. It's it's hand. Hand. Yeah. I meant no cards. Okay. Yes. Uh... I well, uh, yeah. The main thing is that it prevents it's the, yeah, it prevents the ridiculous prevents the four light. drops that we've been seeing. Mm. Uh, this also kills Civ notably quite well. <laughs> well, rip the Civ revival. I really like this though because it's not worth mainboarding at all. Nope. It's nope. not worth sideboarding unless if there's a particularly first deck. I, I I'm inclined to disagree slightly. I can definitely so see this in the main board. Me in our removal. There is, but like, that like I, th I think so there is room to run this. I don't know. I, I think Ooh, I would I, be, I, I, I think I would be playing false step over this a lot of the time. Doom of fool. Yep, doom of fool. Do, uh, false. If I, I really like false step. <laughs> I think it's meta dependent. I think there's a lot of four mana options. I can see this being the top one, given yeah. certain. Okay. 
But let's uh, move on. Uh, I think it's a good safety valve to note. Uh, fallen yep. Champion is free and a black creature. Human Knight has Desperation, and uh, whenever it spares, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it's a 4-2. Wow, what Here's is it What is it with all these insanely pushed reanimator effects? Like, jeez. <laughs> um, I guess we're playing reanimator.deck. <laughs> Mono black. Uh, oh. It does have two toughness, which is kind of true, a, a true. Yeah, spot right now. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I know it's really pushed. I'm actually not a fan of it right now. I don't what? like. Hear me. Goblin Express combos with desperation. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Stop. Hey, hey, and it's black red, so you can play. Uh, so you can have it like. As a list. Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> we Get can out. never have fun cards ever. <laughs> or revolutionary heroes. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and there's more black red stuff that's yeah. interesting yeah. to come. Okay. Uh, Alright, we done with that one? Yeah. Yep. King of the Abyss. All right. Three King black black. Abyss. Oh, sorry. You go. Okay. Uh, three black black. Creature horror. Lifelink. 4-4. Four, four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card named King of the Abyss and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. <laughs> so it just gets you, you infinite four, four well not infinite four four life links, but it gets you a lot of four four life links. Yeah. Uh, four four life link for five isn't an amazing body, nah. but the fact that it just draws you itself and you can play it even when it's still on the battlefield is pretty decent. I think it's uh, uh, worthy of like a sideboard option. Uh, I suspect it's a little weak. So it doesn't die to the four mana kill spell we were just talking about, <laughs> which is. Nice. Nah. I think, I, I think you could run four of these in the sideboard for when you just want to have a four-four lifelink. It's so line. many sideboard slots, and you don't want to be yeah, having so your. You, I don't so think many you want to run two of these main board. No, I think if your deck is like particular, or yeah, two main. I think if your deck is particularly weak to fast mid range decks right. like green white, it's uh. worth it. Uh, but like, if you're just in black, I think there's other options in other colors lower yeah, on. Yeah, because like, curve. if your opponent play, if your opponent plays like Tibold against you, you're not like, you don't have much left on turn five. Like, it's not saving you <laughs> a lot yeah. of the time. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think. Like, yeah. I, I I can see it. It's just I think I'd rather have my anti aggro strat cards at three and four mana. Sure. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right. Let's talk about the next card. Ribbon. Yep. So, Reign of the Dark okay, Lord. Rain... Sorry, go summon. <laughs> <laughs> Reign of the Dark Lord. Creatures in your graveyard have hollow. Uh, their hollow costs are equal to their mana costs. Okay. And it's a one in a black and chain. So, this is regrowth all of the creatures in your graveyard ever? Yeah. They entered. At instant and speed? Flash. Yes. Yes. Flash tapped. Oh boy, this seems like this. really cheap for that effect. <laughs> sure it does. <laughs> it's, it's more awkward to play with than you think. You can't just jam this into any mid-range deck. You actually... You, no, I don't think you do, but like, you just play really low to the ground, and all your creatures are doubled, like... <laughs> I also like that this is powerful, because it forces decks to run and like sideboard enchantment removal mm -hmm. which is with i think is a healthy thing for a format just good enchantments that must be answered so you can't only run artifact removal smolder i mean i think we still have a, a large number of black green graveyard filling creatures and i think this yeah. just continues that strategy that's existed for the majority of custom standard and i don't know i think it's just gonna be a good card we'll see uh um, Black has had some absolutely absurd <laughs> rares, so let's move on to yeah. the next, uh, into red. So, dive into danger. Three red red sorcery. Um, at the beginning of your main, next main phase, untap all creatures you control. After that main phase, there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Journey twice. Okay, so what was I saying about hey, a, a, a big Logan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was oh, I saying about a loop? God, no. <laughs> and you get to draw more cards every time, and he gets prowess, and yeah. Okay, so Big Hat Logan, 
combo deck. Let's do it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll be powerful enough, but it does kind of, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Um, it, it would be silly. And it's an infinite combo at uh, turn five. And um, block. In block, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I think outside of that, I don't think it, it has the home. No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Um, Flamestorm. One red red, Flamestorm deals three damage to each creature. Whenever a creature dealt damage this way dies, this turn, Flamestorm deals one damage to that creature's controller. Oh my god, we finally have a free damage Pyroclasm. Or like, a rate. Yeah, I mean, holy moly. Holy yep. moly. Uh... This card is really good. Really, yes. really good. Yes. Really good. I'm really happy we have this in the format. I want to just, like, vanilla Pyroclasm for so long. <laughs> or, like, vanilla, you know, Anger of the Gods or whatever. Um, because yep. it's re been really difficult to deal with a lot of the aggro decks at the moment. And I just really like this. He already put in Tarkus, who is a safety valve against this for white deck decks. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's just super healthy. It's tyrannic, but less bullshit because it's actually two-sided. Additionally, it hits flyers that are mm. three power. Sort of three toughness. Yes. Oh god, like three damage is so much better than hitting things with power to less. This kills Barong. Still <laughs> before if they didn't lose life. Somehow. This this is a really good safety deck against the token deck we were talking about, like red-white mm -hmm. tokens yeah. or whatever. I, I, I think we've sung enough of Praises yeah. for this card. Yes. This card is a all star and it's gonna be great. <laughs> Hellkite for red red for a dragon five five flyer desperation. Okay. Uh salmon? I can't hear you. Hmm, one second. I am going to uh, yeah. Reconnect the voice. Your uh, guys, 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 uh, guys, though. stop. Um, the Simon's voice cut out, or all your voices cut out uh, when Simon was just starting to read the dragon. So could you read out the dragon <laughs> again? And uh, let's, yeah. Let's... Gatekeeper Hellkite for red, red for a five-five flying dragon, desperation. When Gatekeeper Hellkite despairs, it deals 5 damage to each other creature. Okay, each other creature. Excellent. So, this is pretty powerful. Uh, I say, it's a board wipe that can also be a wing con. Yep. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, like, it's slow. It, it is slow. Haste, so, it's not... It not having haste makes it much weaker as a board wipe. If not <laughs> oh my god. Simon, Simon. <laughs> Goblin Express deck. <laughs> What'd you say? Goblin Express. Go Goblin Express. Yeah, I, I think you have better things to be doing oh, than Goblin, Goblin Express. Express. Like, okay. like, there's a lot of memes with Goblin Express. With Goblin <laughs> Express, you really should be winning the game before you get six mana. Sure, I guess if you get this far, fine. Whatever. <laughs> Remind me to tell Shadow Centaur to add the line Goblin Express can be your commander. Anyway, <laughs> Gatekeeper Hellcat just. I think it's more impractical than you give it credit for. Yeah, it yeah. It's not a UTD. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I think I that this card's quite clunky. Different colors, but Manus is even in the set, and I think <laughs> Manus does this better. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Linking of the Flame, two and a red. Legendary enchantment, Aura. Enchant creature you control. It gets plus three O, and you can sacrifice that creature and eight permanent with different names attached to it. You win the game. Uh, <laughs> this is a. <laughs> Neat. It's an adorable card. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cute. cute. It's not good. Yes, not good. All right. um, but Nahiri, we can do it, guys. No, no. stop. No, stop. Right. Arm with Metropolis. Let's go. No, different yes. names. Anyway, go. Yeah. Power within. Power within. One red for an enchantment. If a spell or ability you control would deal damage to an opponent or a creature an opponent controls, it deals twice that, twice that much damage instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, Power Within deals two damage to... I don't think it's good enough. Uh, since mm -hmm. all the burn in our format currently is largely in the form of shocks and one volcanic hammer, 
I don't think this will be enough. No, However, it could no be... I don't think it's enough right now, but think of it as it reverberates. Wait, 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 wait. ooh. I, I see it as a plant yep. for custom eternal. Uh, yep. do, do you think Incendiary Revel could use this? Uh, incendiary mm -hmm. Revel only... No, not really, oh, I think yeah. it's too slow. Yeah, I think the deck that wants this is faster than the Revel. Yep. Okay, okay. Anyway. All right. Uh, Quillag, Chaos Witch, one red red, legendary creature, spider, demon, at rare. Whenever Quillag, uh, Chaos Witch attacks, it deals two damage to each opponent. Whenever it dies, it deals two damage to up to one target creature, and it's a two three. This is a f very nice red mid-range card. Uh, yes, it's a very <laughs> solid value. It can be an aggro topper or an aggro, uh, mirror. Stopper. Mirror, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quillog yes. blocks Quillog. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's nice. Seems great. Um, it's yeah. a little weird, but nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Quillog's Quillags. Fury Swords. One and a red. Legendary artifacts. Equipment. Rare. Equipped creature has plus two, plus zero, and has haste. Whenever a equipped creature attacks or dies, uh, Fury Sword deals one damage to up to one target creature or player, and has equipped two. Giving haste but having equipped two is pretty awkward. Yeah, yeah. not the best, but it's yeah. still super value. Um, I mean, the attacks or dies is nice. Like, this mm -hmm. does this is this what I think this card is much more likely to see play in red, white, and Nahiri than the say the yes. white yes, one. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, one, one of the big plays that you that you often do is uh, you play on turn two. Uh, and equipment, and then the following turn you probably miss your oh, land drop, no. and you play Aether Sworn. Got um, and none. then you swing for five with a uh, creature that ETBs equips itself. Guys, so guys. I think this goes into red-white Mahiri. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's better than green-white Mahiri right we, now. We, we'll with, um, with Blade of Choices, you choose Death Touch. And it's Oof. your and it's yep. your second co it's your second copy of the uh, Revolver. <laughs> that yeah. that yeah. never runs out of charges yeah. and is actually Turns good on its own. Oh god. Uh, okay, so I guess Red White Nahiri is coming back. Um, but let's talk about the first flame. Oh, one. Wh wait. Oh, sorry. What? Uh, one one note about Fury Sword is that the Fury Sword deals the damage, not oh, the creature. That is. True. Oh. Okay, it kills all that my hopes is... and dreams. No. Oh, <laughs> fun. We don't have. Uh, speaking of Rip, let's talk about a. Johnny card that only crush and <laughs> like crush one. Of them. The first flame, one and a red for sorcery. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. When you play that card this turn, repeat this process. <laughs> Combo is with uh... infinite mana and having no limbs. <laughs> yeah. No, you it's play it. Like... You play this in a manless, like manless deck, right? <laughs> I so, know. I mean, I guess one of the big things for it is that if you play this, you know, late game, you can't... I mean, not even infinite mana, just a bunch of mana. Like, if you play yeah. this with eight lands, you activate this, play it. The problem is, is that, like, what's probably going to happen is you Hit. play this, you play a card, you play a land, you flip over another land, and then you're like, <laughs> well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> Do you play, you play um, red-green with additional lands card turns? Uh, additional lands. Remember that one? Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I guess this is like a lot of draws. <laughs> Except it doesn't actually count as draws for its purposes. Oh, but All right. Um, I don't. I don't think it has the home. No. Probably not. Okay. Um, Dark root hunt pack. One green green. Two one flash. Whenever you cast a non instant spell during an opponent's turn. Create a two-two green wolf creature token. So the Briar Rabbit. Albert, how you like this in Flash? <laughs> yeah, Briar Rabbit deck just got real good. Um, I mean, that deck did lose a few like decent oh, Flash. Spell cards. Slumber Mori. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, spell Slumber Mori, of course, bigger, but it, this it gains a lot uh, if Holland rotates in as well, and this is the second of those. Excellent. Um, well. Gaping Dragon, 5 green green. Creature Dragon Horror has Trample and Haste, and a green sacrifice opponent put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Gaping Dragon, and it's a 7 7. 
So there are a lot of seven mana cards that ideally win win the game if you get to untap with it. But like this is, this is a triple haste. Yeah, yeah it's triple, triple haste. haste. It's a seven seven. And more importantly, you can play this in just mono green stone. Uh, okay, guys, guys, yep. guys, guys. So you can if sack you land just sack a forest. So you play player. this with the advisor, <laughs> and uh, if you ever get this out, you instantly win, right? Because you can has all you have all your mana open. You sacrifice like as many lands as you can. You like hit them for sixteen or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, like, you lose seven life. The, the big thing <laughs> yeah. is, if you ever swing with this twice, you probably win or yes. get horribly blown out. Um, <laughs> Sack all your permanents, Doom Blade. No. Oh. Anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, Galg, Hawkeye Go, Hunter. I, Hawkeye oh. Hunter. Yep. Uh, legendary creature, Giant Archer. Uh, it's a 6-6 six, six for 2 green green with Reach and Vigilance. <laughs> um, and whenever... Well, I mean, it, it has a drawback. Whenever uh, Galg, Hawkeye Hunter enters the battlefield, target opponent creates a 4-4 four, four colorless dragon artifact creature token with flying named Ancient Dragon. Hey, you're not karma for at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it has vigilance. I don't think Jeff is good enough for standard. But so I mean, it's possible. I mean, so the, I mean, there's a Tesla card in... that makes this a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's there's two ways of playing green white. There's team token where you build a bunch of tokens, and then there's team non token where you play Asian individuality and stick your <laughs> thumb out against everyone else. <laughs> no, no, I still don't like that though because if you don't have agent, this card is not even no, 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 like, no, no. even with agent, it's a fair card. It yeah. I mean the other fair. the other thing I is agree. you play I it in you play it in blue green and you just play sedate for one and bounce their token. Oh no wait sedate we're losing so sedate no sedate still... <laughs> no no like that's still a two you don't want to wait like you get something yeah 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 there's better mid rangey four drops um, yeah we could just we could just play the bus we could just play the busted black four drops instead <laughs> yep yep. Uh, Bad MTG combos where you spend five cards to get a 2 2. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Uh, Jeff's Great Bow. One in a green, legendary Jeff. artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets plus 3 0 and has reach. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a creature, it deals that much damage to up to one other target creature and equipped 3. Uh, Attack Oof. into me, I dare you. <laughs> well, I can confirm this card is very, very good and limited, <laughs> having drafted yeah. it several times. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure it's... I mean, yeah. it is... I don't, I don't trust it. It's sure. like removal, but it's really weird removal. I could it's almost, way too much of a cost. I could almost see it in Green Ramp in the mm. Green in, Ramp is weird. Yeah, mm, let's move on, though. Yeah. Hydra Hunting, X, green, 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 sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus X, plus X until on the turn. Then that creature fights up to X target creatures you don't control. or fight damage happens simultaneously. That's not how... This is an actual card, isn't it? No. No, this is not. Uh, the card you are thinking of Portland is... Monstrous oh, Onslaught, perhaps? Yeah, Monstrous... There's a lot of variants like it. Yeah, You are thinking... Um, but not that. Yeah, the... Mm -hmm. You're thinking of the Eldritch Moon cards. Um, the wording here seems incorrect, right? As in, we've. Uh, it should be. Um, shouldn't this be worded like Pelucanus or? No. It, no. I mean, it says it does what it says it does. And oh. It's oh. going to update the wording. Okay. 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 The wording. Yeah, right, I am right. The wording is not correct. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. But. Uh, um, we know what it's going to do. Wording can be fixed. Yeah. Uh, sure. Based on the intent, I think it could, um, like, it's, it, this could actually make mono green real. Yeah, and, yeah. Nah. Like, so, uh, no, so, no, like, so, it's almost real. Seismiclons has been piloting it to some success, and I think something like this will really help. It's it. a mono green pseudo board wipe. Yeah, like, I, I think mono green just needs a curve of help. Um, in order to happen, I think it's on the horizon. I just don't think the moment for mono greens, you know, dawn is. Hmm. And like, right. but it's, it's a nice tool for future mono green decks. Yep. Uh, can we move on? Yeah. Sure. All right. 
Keeper of Souls. One and a green for a human cleric. That's a 2 2. It has one green tap. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with the same name as the sacrifice creature and put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. <laughs> the same so, name. I like Restoration Angel. This is like Restoration Angel. I but mean, it works with dice triggers too, like Propagating Slime. Well, I mean, isn't the cute thing here oh, is that you God. is that it works with Hollow? It also works with Hollow, yeah. It works with Hollow. It Has... works with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, State of Wayfinder. It's like value pod. It's pod without the combo. You just run it for value. You know, um, hmm. in Custom Eternal, you can combo with Manifestation of Kitchen Things from Aner. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, I think Keeper Souls has a lot of value. Yep. I'm excited to build around her. A I variety of uses. Yep. Yay. Alright. Spreading Blight. Three and a green enchantment. If an effect would create a non spider creature token under your control, you may instead create a number of one two green spider creature tokens with reach, equal to that token's toughness. So it doubles the toughness. Of yep. uh, any tokens you make. Across a ton of spiders. So I guess um, that deck, that token deck we're talking about, is actually green white, because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of the tokens. Yeah, I mean, we... you, the token cards need to be in white or green alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um oh, I like this with prompt slime. I mean, it is. This is a, this is a this is a four mana do nothing enchantment, so it's probably bad. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's fun. Uh, this I, is I, a I, fun I, card for like EDH-ish formats. Yep. It's EDH. Like a per session. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? I'll go next. The road ahead, two and a green enchantment, rare. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, journey. This. S we seems already like... have an effect like this in Loretto. We have one in Janata. Those yeah. are both four mana. Um, and they're both good. Both creatures, aren't they? They are. So they're yeah, yeah, they're both creatures. I kind of want to play the twelve uh, Explorda. <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> well, we don't have any fetches, <laughs> so um, like well... a density of these have to be good, right? Yeah, probably. I don't know what you do with them, but it's got to be something. Well, and, I, uh, this one draws the cards in a roundabout way. Flipping dragon. Mm. Yeah. Eh. I just wonder you if this ends up being... Forests, and then you sack them all. Right. I just wonder if this I, ends, I ends up being too slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's too slow. I think it's going to be hilarious. Uh, chill brain of custom EDH fame will love this. Woo! <laughs> Okay, I, I really like the card, but yeah. Multicolor, rare. Multi yep. CR and Blade of the Lords. One black blue for legendary creature, human assassin. It's a 3-3 death touch, and when it enters the battlefield, each player chooses a creature card name. Hmm. CR and can't be blocked except by creatures with one of the chosen names, and can't block creatures that don't have one of the chosen names. <laughs> so... So, if your opponent wants to keep their creatures alive, then they name a card that they don't have. Uh, and if you want to cre keep Sharon alive, you name a card they don't have. But if uh, you want to kill something of theirs, you name something that they have. Yes. And, uh, and vice versa. But each player has control of this, so this seems a little unwieldy, which is... I mean, the free-free death touch... Just in general, like yeah, it's decent, mm -hmm. uh, but probably. Uh, I mean, this probably isn't quite good enough. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's close, but I think it's probably I... a little too cute. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, don't I mean, know. I'm, basically, I'll it, it, if ramp ends up being like you know the go-to deck, uh, maybe just play this because like you want so much death touch, and this is like a good yeah. beta while that you're waiting for their ramp target to come out. That you probably pre-named. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Dusk, Ulysses, Lost Princess, uh, Green and Blue, Ulysses. Uh, El okay, sure. I butchered the pronunciation there. Uh, green and Blue, legendary creature, human wizard, has hexproof, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a dusk. 
you may put Dusk on top of its owner's library. If you do, that player may journey three times. And then it's a 2-2. Two -two. So, so what? So this is just a two-mana hexproof creature. That's, yeah, that's really two, the important two part of this. For, for two is pretty good. Uh, are you saying this is a bogle? What? Yes, it's a bogle. It also has a lot of flavor text. Well, but it's a bogle. I mean... It's flavor text, but it usually will. Um... I'm not sure about it being flavor dusk. It's, I mean, because it, you're not re, as in, because you journey, your journey dusk and your journey two hour cards, right? Yes. In it's right situational. Deck, it's not flavor text. True. In deck, this is a lot of card selection. Hexproof makes it basically not a creature for the sake of most removal. Most. Mm. Um, like this can be in the right deck at the beginning of your upkeep journey two times if you're, you know, consistently hitting them with two creatures. But you need to have a lot of creatures anyway. Like it, it's 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 a weird. Like if you have some sort of like small flyer as your first turn play, uh, or well, like I think you're well, a yeah, hybrid flyer churning deck that could be rude. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Hmm. I know. I think yeah. I think this card ends up being quite powerful, like, but like awkwardly positioned. Hmm. Right. Or just a bogle. Anyway, we'll see. Lantra, the embraced. One black red for legendary creature, human knight. Three three with desperation. When Matric despairs, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non land card from it. Then that player exiles that card. That player loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Oh, I've this been missing that last part. Mm -hmm. it's Whoa, good. I do not remember that. <laughs> A really good safety valve against control or ramp. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think that's what's needed. The safety valve. I think it's the mid-range cards. Um, and man, juggling them out has never felt so sweet. Uh, against a lot of decks, this is just a three-three, and the ability isn't like worth it really. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a sideboard card, but a potent one. Yes, definitely. Yep. Yeah, yeah show me that nickel ball last trick. <laughs> show me that nickel ball. <laughs> uh, Oswald, Velka's partner. This is white and a black for a legendary creature, human cleric. It's lifelink, and it has tap, pay X life, return target human creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it's 2 free. This card Not seems absolutely. This seems absolutely absurd, yes. right? This yeah. seems absurd. Yes. Yes. So okay. We built both Abzan and Mardu human. Murdu, you run a revolutionary herald. <laughs> in Abzan, you run ruthless collector and pioneer researcher, and mm. your aggro ring. Oh, okay, okay, guys, guys, well, guys. So, isn't this just crazy? As just a two, like, as in, it's already like a really good a two, two, two free life. life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two free life. But for on two. top of all of that, um, when we go through all the mythics earlier yeah. today, they were all human gods. Oh my god, Ooh. Nito and stuff. Ooh. And... Ooh. <laughs> no, it's not. In Mar uh, no, no, in Mardu, no. you want Gwen. Yep. Gwen. Uh, yep. There's a lot of... Wait, wait. And in Mardu Agro, you run patches to discard Gwen. There's Ooh. so many cheesy things you can do with yeah. this card. It'll this card's going to make a lot fun. of... Them. I like... really like Oswald. Um, we're, he might have to be nerfed, like... Payment on the tap, but I want to find out. Find well, I mean, out. like, yeah, if he was like, I mean, if he was graveyard to the to your hand, right? That would be one thing. Oh, if he was graveyard to the hand, he would not even really need to pay more life, or at least not as much. Yes, life. you would. Oh, well, as in, because no, because it's still good getting back small things then. Uh, sure. Yep. And um, it's good big. It's good small. And the thing is, like, if it. Development knobs. If they, if we need them, we can find that out first. Though through the first leak, you know. Yep. If this were to rotate them, I want to build around this. This card seems fun and yeah, potentially busted. This, this more, card seems. This card seems. Which busted. looks like the Sept Civ Katari, a <laughs> broken card that will be more fair than others. Hmm. Remember, Civ Katari got nerfed. 
Yeah. I'm talking about the three mana version. <laughs> Priscilla Painting Protector. Okay. Legendary creature, human cleric, is a three four for blue white with lifelink and defender. If a creature dealt damage by Priscilla Painting Protector, this turn would die. Instead, return the creature to its owner's hand. It can't kill things. Yeah, it can only bounce gets them. A thing. This mm. turns aggro on, like, on its head. In that you, like, the card advantage of control goes out the window, but it's just so much board presence and life to counter that which it cannot block. So Priscilla is, like, against midrange, they run Artorius, which has first strike. Yeah. But against aggro, this just wrecks. Well, and, and mid mid range. Oh, this, 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 this does stop most of the mid range decks. This still is going to stop uh, you know, your Pioneer like, Researcher from like having a stat line. Sure, sure. I'm saying it isn't oppressive against mid range. Yeah. As much I, as it is against aggro. I think this card is more stunningly fair than the one prior. Yes. I think, like, <laughs> I think Priscilla forces aggro to main board removal. Like, actually mm. destroy, not no, no, because you can just swing in, hit, and then shock. And then you have oh, your okay, card that's in hand. That's it's fair. a one for one with some life. Okay. Yeah, because the creature goes back to your hand. Like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like it's still really good. Priscilla will never be an X for one, uh, aside from the life link. Hmm. But the oh, and huge. also yeah, this <laughs> this card's still really bad against this, this card's still really bad against Tybalt <laughs> because they're like, okay, block me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. No, like Tybalt. Yeah. If a Priscilla deck is running creatures, they just attack the Tybalt. Hmm. Yep. Or okay. they just don't block the Tybalt. Anywho, Quilana, Mother of Pyromancy. Red green for a 2 2 legendary creature, human shaman. It has tap, add red to your mana pool, and it has three tap, create a 1 1 red and green shaman creature token with haste, and tap, add red to your mana pool. So, as I much mean... as I love it, if you don't run this at ramp, you run it as a token engine. Yep. Really. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and like the thing is, if you want to do ramp, you've got campfire. <laughs> so, no, there's no reason think... you can't run both. Yeah. I think it's a flexible, like, you can either ramp or make a token. Yep. And it could be run for that reason and some weird red, green mid-range ramp yep. list. Those have existed. Mm -hmm. Alright. Sigma Air. Errant Ally. Blue and a red. 3-2. Uh, legendary creature, Human Knight. At the beginning of your upkeep journey, and Sigma Air attacks each turn if able. I like this. I really like this. This is a sweet design. It's a cool card. Sigma so, um, Air. Is it good? I mean, it's. I mean, I think it definitely has a place, as in it's a. It definitely means that, uh, you know, more red blue decks have like a decent, have a really good two drop. Uh, I think. I think this is probably good. Uh, I don't think it's like an you know, amazing busted card, but I think this is probably good. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Next. Sif, great gray wolf, two green white, legendary creature wolf. It is a 5-5 five, five for 4 mana with Vigilance and Trample, and uh, this can't attack alone unless it's equipped. The mm -hmm. flavor. Um, this seems the pretty body. good against mm -hmm. any mid-range... No, not against, in a mid-range deck, because you have another creature. Yeah. Rest in peace, aggro, because this can block alone just fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are so many just massive bodies that, like... I, I hope there's a lot of like good big creature hate in this set because like this is this we is haven't seen great. it yet. Yeah. Um, well, hmm. so you say rip aggro, but then we have the next card, Solaire, Seeker of Sunsight. Praise Sun the sun. Light. Red white uh, is a legendary creature, human knight, two two haste, and when Solaire enters the battlefield. Another target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of other creatures you control. So, what was that red-white tokens deck we were talking about? <laughs> I want you to go this wide! <laughs> uh, uh, this is just a business two drop that you yep. run three of, maybe four. Like, 
It's good. It's I think you run four of them. It's just a good card. You throw this on the ground, turn two, you keep running it, and then maybe they kill well, it. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, when it's by itself, it's not quite as good as something like, you know, uh, Sid's Messenger or whatever, a lot of the yeah, time. But it's just as fine it on turn never, two. It's, it never yeah. is by itself. It's yeah, fair. okay, okay. Uh, um, the oh, Fair Lady. Next. Two black red, uh, two black green, legendary creature, spider, demon, has reach, and whenever a non-token creature dies, you may pay two life. If you do, create a one-two reach green, uh, uh, sorry, a one-two green spider creature token with reach. Whenever a token creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Uh, aristocrats tokens seems good. Yep. Yeah. I don't think we need to say anything else. Yeah. yeah I think the four so, drop is, I think, I think the four drop slot slow. is could happen. I think yeah. black green mid range four drop slot is crowded. I think this sure. will likely get cut. It's not a mid range sure. card. It's a uh, aristocrat. It's a pure aristocrat slash aristocrat aristocrat True. Card. Yeah. Uh, Half Wolf Dragon Tooth. Four generic for legendary artifact. Equipment indestructible. Equipped creature gets plus four, plus four, and trample. Equipped four. Goes in the bad Havel combo deck. <laughs> so, so th this is a just power this power is a legendary power. indestructible version of Power Suit. We have had Power Suit in the yep. format the entire time, and nobody has ever played it. So, yep. yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> let's get to a relevant card: Decaying Domain. It's a rare land. Tap at C tier mana pool, but three generic and tap. Sacrifice Decaying Domain. Choose one. Destroy target non-basic land. Target opponent loses two life. Woof! <laughs> this card's just good all the yeah, time. It's yeah. just really, really good. It's completely playable. Uh, it's like a needed safety valve right yeah. now. I think it's super nice. Yep. Yep. I can't wait to wasteland my opponent's <laughs> wasteland with this. Yep. Well, all right. Firelink Shrine. Uh, our final rare. Woo. When Fire Link Shrine enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, journey. And it has tap oh, and no. close your So, you know how we were saying, oh, we don't have any really good discard outlets for the reanimator decks? Well, I think this is, I think this has given us both a discard outlet, and holy moly have we got a lot of reanimator like enablers now. Yeah, yeah this, this card is going to be... Re like, it's not going to be as busted as uh, Sunset Pyramids was, but jeez. Jeez. Yep. Yep. Um, right. So I'm going to take us through some relevant uncomplicated yeah, cards some... ahead of time. Yep. I'm just going to turbo through these. Encounter with Hollows, one in a white sorcery, Create two one one white zombie soldier creature tokens. Then, if you control four more creatures, journey. <laughs> this is relevant to a lot of different decks. Yep. Zombies tokens. I, I like grow. it. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. It's what just else? Good. Um. Next card to talk about is Gwendolyn's rebuke. Did I go past it? No, Gwendolyn's grace. Uh, I found Oh. It's blue. One blue instant oh, one blue. counter target spell unless its controller pays two. Then here's the kicker. Scry two. This car is insane. Holy it's insane. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, and just blue decks. Well, blue got something in this set. So eh? why is it yeah. that every set wants to like print <laughs> a two mana counter target spell unless the controller pays two? Like we have so many now, so many, and they've all been real I... good. Yep. So I think well, one of them is rotating with Dreamscape, right? Yep. Wait, uh, no, what? Not a mana Dreamscape not a does not have a mana leak. We have Wait, no, no, so just many. Combos with Dreamscape. Sorry, right. I'm thinking of the one that combos with Mori from mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this card's insane. It's probably too good. I yeah. would not be surprised if it became a Scry One before the end of this route. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Cultist of Sin. Let me see if I can find it. I assume it's, it's a black a card. Ah, right, here we go. Black, two, two. Creature, human, cleric. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand, and you choose a non-land card from it. Exile that card until this leaves the battlefield. And Hollow 3 Black Black. So it's Ooh. a 2-2 two -two Brain Maggot for 3 with Hollow 3 Black Black. That's uh, some uh, spicy, nice like, option. disruption. It, yeah, yeah, it's a good it's a good disruptive card. Um, it won't see play in, It won't see a ton of play necessarily, but it's certainly good to have. I Agreed. guess, yeah, I guess if we're wanting to, like... Yeah, stop 
like some sort of cheaty decks uh, cheating. This is going to be something yep. worth looking at. Yep. All right. So, uh, dark root scout. Uh, no. No, no, Wait. no. We're going in we're order. Going uh, 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 a... Nito's, uh, miasma. Nito's miasma. Nito's yeah. miasma. Mm, yeah. Sorry. Okay. One, so. One, one. Sorcery target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Other creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Oh, oh wow! Another yeah. hit of a sweeper. So oh. I don't think there's room for it with both tyrannic and an anger variant, but I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I and think you might. It, yeah. I think you play this instead of tyrannic in some decks, like especially because um, tyrannic doesn't hit uh, like revolutionary cards. Yes, yeah, Tyrannic is one-sided, but it, but Tyrannic doesn't hit well, like Revolutionary Herald, doesn't hit a bunch of decks, free twos, right? I think yeah. a lot of the decks unsatisfied with Tyrannic will be running red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, perhaps, but we aren't. We don't. We can't know that. Like, sure. I, I think I prefer Tyrannic in mid-range decks. I think I prefer Neo's Miasma in control decks where yeah. it's not yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Uh, all right. Next is Grim Warrior. Oh. Uh, one in a red creature, human warrior. It's a two-two with desperation, and when it despairs, it deals two damage to target creature. Poor. I don't like it myself. It's a bear or a shock. But it's, it's very a slow. Two mana bear or a two yeah. mana. Well, and it's a two mana That's shock that we've a turn delay. Yeah. Oh no, no, but it, as in, okay, okay, it will potentially deal two damage and be a like searing blaze, problem. right? I like it in the Goblin Express. Like, deck. It, it, if deck. if they have a, yeah. if they have a tapped creature, you attack with this, get in the two damage, and then shock it. So mm -hmm. it's it is sometimes like a it is sometimes a searing blaze, kind of type yeah. of. Thing. By the way, I've been referencing Goblin Express deck. It doesn't exist. Uh, it what? Might. It might. Uh, uh, the card is successful one. All right. So, Dark Root Scout. Uh, Calamit Gaze. We're still yeah. in red. Oh, uh, we're still in red. <laughs> Stop bouncing ahead. Um, okay, there's one in the red instance. Calamit's Gaze deals four damage to target creature or player that was dealt damage this turn. Oh wow! I don't think burns. this is consistent enough. Like, I think it's great for for like like a burn deck as a burn option. Red aggro. Yeah. Is red aggro. Yeah. Consistent. Yeah, uh, sure. Black red aggro too, and white red aggro also. All right. Uh, anything else on that? No, that's, that's just gonna be good. <laughs> Dark Root Scout. Good for aggro. Alright, Dark Root Scout. It is two green green, uh, two two, flash, and it's a human archer scout. When it enters the battlefield, return to get instant card or card with flash from your graveyard to your hand. <laughs> is this gonna be... Uh, wait, the other one was 3 mana, wasn't it? The one that made 2-2 two, two walls? Was indeed 3 mana. Oh, curved nicely, okay. So is quick draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, this could definitely... If that if that deck is ends up being powerful enough, uh, this could definitely see a bit of play. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's spicy. It's decks that care about flash. Oh yeah. god, is, is this... this uh, it... Also, like... Lets you play more instants as well. Yeah, is, yeah. Is this disgusting? Very nice thing. Is this Playing disgusting with flicker effects? Seems nice. Uh, what'd you say, Ruben? Is this disgusting with flicker effects? Mm, yeah, that's true. Flicker effects. <laughs> that's really well with this. Uh, I mean, that seems right. real good, but we might might be fine. Um, uh, what's next? What? Anything else we want to talk about? Uh, Dark root uh, feline. Um, Darkroot yeah. feeling uh, for the same Which deck. Which is... Oh, where is Darkroot? No, wait, wait. Where is Darkroot feeling? It's blue-green. Oh, okay. Come on, guys. you got, got to get me in color order. So, real quick, uh, Darkroot feeling it has been rated to be a 2-mana 2-2. Two -two. The uh, Sculptors is not quite updated for oh, field. Okay. So for a green and a blue, you get a 2-2. Two -two. Cat Advisor. Advisor, Tribal, and the Settlers. <laughs> Whenever you cast a non-instant spell during an opponent's turn, draw a card. Already good. One <sighs> green, blue, tap. The next spell you cast this turn may be cast as though it had flash. That's a lot. So, um, I guess... So I guess the, the issue with it is that, like, the deck that you want to run in, 
it you the next instance you want to run it in doesn't need the activated ability. Right. The but activated ability is for limited. Cards. Yeah. The activated drawing cards are is good. limited and uh, some random sorceries. Right. But like, uh, it, you just run it as a draw engine. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, while we're around here, I actually want to scroll up a little bit and just quickly mention Crooked Cleric. Yep. So it's a white black for a 2 2 human cleric. Zombies you control into the battlefield with additional plus one plus one counter on them. Um, I don't think we have the threshold of zombies, even with hollows and all the zombies it brings with hollows. But, like, we're probably going to see zombies in the near future. I can see this card being important for a con uh, tribal zombie deck. In the Sounds right. real good, yeah. <laughs> So, land cycle is uh, limited. No, no, but well, let's do Paladin. Paladin of Holy yeah. Relics. Uh, two green oh, okay. white, yeah. a creature human knight with trample. When Paladin of Holy Relics enters the battlefield, search your library and. Uh, oh, sorry, your graveyard and library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Uh, it's a free free with trample. I. I don't think there's an aura that's good enough to be worth it. I think there's a lot of good equipment. Yeah, I mean, you're, like, just, pl I you're just playing I, I don't think this is the rates you want to be paying. I think it's just too expensive for the mm -hmm. equipment decks. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you that wanna... said, it's, it, it's, it's a good effect. Yes. It's, yeah. Um, it seems like more like a limited card, uh, I think. <laughs> yep. But it's close. There's a bunch of random, just good sideboard comments that I'd like to mention. Uh, well, first... Let's just finish the uncommons. Yeah. Um, the non-flash card that I'm most jazzed for among uncommons, Relentless Marauder, a black-red 2-2 uh, human berserker with desperation, and when it despairs, other creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control until end of turn. Okay, now I'm interested, actually, because I didn't even consider that for constructive. <laughs> no, you play it in, like, a despair deck or just, like, a black-red pure aggro deck. deck. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the Goblin Express Despair deck. Yeah. <laughs> Stop oh, yeah. with the Goblin Express, ha. Huh? Uh, no, you don't need Goblin Express, you have Propaganda Artist, okay? <laughs> no, no, but I get the Black-Red Despair trigger every turn. No, with just... The way Despair works, you um, can Despair this, and then um, sacrifice it to something, and then Despair the creature that reanimates the creature and bring this back. And oh, then all no. Come back at the end of turn. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Uh, I'm not sure it's good enough. Let's look at the land cycle. Uh, so, this is an uncommon land cycle. Uh, it's ETB tapped, then uh, add black or green in this case, and sacrifice. Look at the top card of your library, you may put that card into your graveyard. It's Graveyard Scry. Um, yeah, that's neat. So. Graveyard Scry on Sacrifice, it's ETB have, Tapped. It's worse than the other lands in the format, which is good, because yeah. we don't need more We have some lands. very good lands. Uh, we're losing we're losing the Mill lands and the uh, Twisted lands. Tap, but tap lands. Yeah, tap, tap yeah. lands. Yeah, slumbering <laughs> is the tap, or is that the Mill? Twisted. Yeah, slum, twisted. Slumbering, are the, slumbering are the Mill lands, and Twisted are the uh, yep. Tap Tap. Okay, uh, okay, these... Like Wait, are the, yeah, this is ten... Guys, I just want to say, the ten, saying, there's really? ten of the uncommon lands. Ah, yes. It's, that's yes. important. Full cycle. So, random sideboard commons. First uh, one, a rest reprint. Ooh, spicy. Which okay. I think bears mentioning. Yep. Uh, what reprint? A duress. duress. Ah, yes, that's worth mentioning. Um, uh, uh, we've mentioned the... Over. I, I briefly want to mention Fade to Ash. Um, it's not a great rate, but exiling target artifact or enchantments is not nothing. Um, if we need that over destroying, that's good. Yep. Yep. Um, there's a single pillar of flame, pillar of flame reprint, single red for sorcery, two damage to target creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way, would die this turn, exile it instead. This this will be a good card now that Dream Spark is. Rotating out. It's better than Dream Spark. Well, like Dream Spark was a lot players. better in uh, like, as in Dream Spark was a lot better against aggro. This is Aside a lot better. Aside from aggro mirrors, it's better than Dream Spark. Uh, another reprint in blue is we have Essence Scatter, Oof. Uh, counter target creature spell. So that's yep. just Shit. a useful tool tool to have. Yep. yep. Uh, um, in green, we have Degradation. 
single green for sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less. In white, we have Felka's Justice, which is one in the white for an instant that deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, it's not great, but we haven't had great removal in white for a while. Hmm. Hmm. Um, back to blue. Um, sorry for the the stream <laughs> uh, being dragged along. We have a reflavored Anticipate in Cold. Gift of the Dark. Mm. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Um, anticipate, we'll see play. This will see play. <laughs> so real quick, Executioner, Junker, Toon Green, Instant, choose one, destroy target creature with flying, or exile all cards from target player's graveyard. And there's uh, more graveyard hate, black. Um, the first black card. It's Abyssal Spirits, one in a black, sorcery. Exile up to three cards from target opponent's graveyard. That player loses two life for each creature card exiled this way. Good graveyard hate for aggro. I mean, do you just... <laughs> just go like, play a bunch of these! Six, uh, six, yeah, six. Actually, uh, scroll down a little bit in black. We actually have Backstab. Um, hmm. A single black with an instant. Target tap creature gets my assume, my assume to under turn. This is mm. a great piece of one mana removal for control decks that can't afford to play uh, Gambler's Ruin. Yes. It yes. does say tap, but I do like it. Well, sure. yeah, so Tybalt it is always tapped. <laughs> well, and it can't. Yeah. So it, I really like this from a design spe perspective because it can't stop Desperation, for example, but uh, it does like a lot of not, other good not things. Not using utility creatures is relevant. But yep. I do think yep. the card is very nice. It you know mm -hmm. you can hold it's instant yep. and always minus two. Anyway, we have to wrap up. So if, uh, thank you everyone for joining us for the Hollows of Lordron set review for custom standards. You should join us all on the Custom Magic Discord, uh, which is linked in the uh, link below. And uh, yeah, come join us for custom standard. We've got a rotation coming in. Lots of brewing. It should be great. Bye. Cheers.